this is me again, Teacher Pauline, and today let's talk about nativist theory. Humans are storytelling beings. As far as we know, no other species has the capacity for language and ability to use it in endlessly creative ways. From our earliest days, we name and describe things. We tell others what's happening around us. For people immersed in the study of language and the study of learning, one really important question has engendered a lot of debate over the years. How much of this ability is innate or part of our genetic makeup? And how much do we learn from our environments? The most well-known theory about language acquisition is the nativist theory, which suggests that we are born with something in our genes that allows us to learn language. It proposes that there is a theoretical language acquisition device somewhere in our brains that is responsible for learning a language the same way the hypothalamus is responsible for maintaining your body temperature. An innate capacity for language. There is no doubt that we acquire our native languages, complete with their vocabularies and grammatical patterns. But is there an inherited ability underlying our individual languages? A structural framework that enables us to grasp, retain, and develop language easily? In 1957, linguist Noam Chomsky published a groundbreaking book called Syntactic Structures. It proposed a novel idea. All human beings may be born with an innate understanding of how language works, whether we learn Arabic, English, Chinese, or sign language is determined, of course, by the circumstances of our lives. But according to Chomsky, we can acquire language because we're genetically encoded with a universal grammar, a basic understanding of how communication is structured. What convinced Chomsky that a universal grammar exists? First one, languages share certain basic traits. Chomsky and other linguists have said that all languages contain similar elements. For example, globally speaking, language breaks down into similar categories of words, nouns, verbs, and adjectives. Another shared characteristic of language is, re is the repeated sequential use of a particular type of linguistic element or grammatical structure. With rare exceptions, all languages use structures that repeat themselves, allowing us to expand those structures almost infinitely. For example, take the structure of a descriptor. In almost every known language, it's possible to repeat the descriptors over and over again. She wore an itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. Strictly speaking, more adjectives could be added to further describe that bikini, each embedded within the existing structure. The recursive property of language allows us to expand the sentence. She believed Ricky was innocent almost endlessly. Lucy believed that Fred and Ethel knew Ricky had insisted he was innocent. The recursive property of language is sometimes called nesting because in almost all languages, sentences can be expanded by placing repeating structures inside each other. Tomsky and others have argued that because almost all languages share these characteristics despite their other variations, we may be born pre-programmed with a universal grammar. Second one, we learn language almost effortlessly. Linguist 
like Chomsky have argued for a universal grammar in part because children everywhere develop language in very similar ways in short periods of time with little assistance. Children show awareness of language categories at extremely early ages, long before any overt instruction occurs. For example, one study showed that 18-month-old children recognize a dog referred to a thing and crunching referred to an action, showing they understood the form of the word. Having the article A before it or ending with ing determine whether the word was an object or an event. It's possible that they have learned these ideas from listening to people talk, but those who spouse the idea of a universal grammar say it's more likely that they have an innate understanding of how words function even if they don't know the words themselves. Third one, we learn in the same sequence. Proponents of universal grammar say children the world over naturally develop language in the same sequence of steps. So, what does the shared developmental pattern look like? Many linguists agree that there are three basic stages. Learning sounds, learning words, learning sentences. More specifically, we perceive and produce speech sounds. We babble, usually with a consonant then vowel pattern. We speak our first rudimentary words. We grow our vocabularies, learning to classify things. We build two-word sentences and then increase the complexity of our sentences. Different children proceed through these stages at different rates. But the fact that we all share the same developmental sequence may show we're hardwired for language. And the fourth one, we learn despite a poverty of stimulus. Tomsky and others have also argued that we learn complex languages with their intricate grammatical rules and limitations without receiving explicit instruction. For example, children automatically grasp the correct way to arrange dependent sentence structures without being taught. We know to say, the boy who is swimming wants to eat lunch instead of the boy wants to eat lunch who is swimming. Despite this lack of instructional stimulus, we still learn and use our native languages, understanding the rules that govern them. We wind up knowing a lot more about our language's work than were ever overtly taught. How does this theory affect language learning in classroom? One of the most practical outgrowths has been the idea that there is an optimal age for language acquisition among children. The younger, the better is the prevailing idea. Since young children are primed for natural language acquisition, learning a second language may be more effective in early childhood. Many teachers now use more natural, immersive approaches that mimic the way we acquire our first languages, rather than memorizing grammatical rules and vocabulary lists. Here's the bottom line. Noam Chomsky's theory says that we're all born with an innate understanding of the way language works. Chomsky based his theory on the idea that all languages contain similar structures and rules, and the fact that children everywhere acquire language the same way, and the fact that children everywhere acquire language the same way and without much effort seems to indicate that we're born wired with the basics already present in our brains. Although not everyone agrees with Chomsky's theory, it continues to have a profound influence on how we think about language acquisition today. 
Thank you for listening. For more related videos about this topic, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye!